Hi, this is Michael Gennaro, Vice President of Marketing for TMC. I'm speaking today with TMC President Rich Tarani about building online communities. Good afternoon, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great. Rich, today's topic is the cure for click ad fatigue. And you and I could probably spend days in here speaking about all the uh, implications, ramifications, and issues involved in click ads. Um, the flip side of that discussion would be that virtually every company on earth has decided that that needs to be part of their marketing mix. Um, today I'd like to talk about alternatives, potential alternatives that can be more effective than your click ads. Um, starting with um, building highly ranked, highly organically ranked communities online in partnership with major media companies. Uh, why don't you take one second and start out just by explaining some of the issues involved with cl the click ad campaigns that are so popular today. Sure. Well, uh, as you know, we spend so much time uh, talking to companies in the communication space, and quite often I run into uh, VPs of marketing and uh, chief marketing officers and other people that manage uh, click ad campaigns, search ad campaigns, and one of the frustrations that they feel in the industry is there's no transparency in auction pricing. Mm -hmm. So uh, if a keyword is five cents today and next month it's a dollar and then the next month it's five dollars on its way up to twenty, thirty, or fifty dollars mm -hmm. per click. Which is not unheard of. That's not, a, that's not an unusual depending thing. Depending on the keywords, mm -hmm. uh, the question becomes what, what are these auctions? How are they being run? Are they truly transparent and are you really paying the right amount? And even the companies that uh, have gotten away from paying a lot per click and there are a number of companies that have found ways to use long tail queries of strung together words that that um, seem to be more limit effective. the number of times their ad will show yes and but also, also give pay them less. less expensive keywords exactly then what happens the companies I've spoken with in that camp complain to me on and on about click fraud and then when they start analyzing their clicks the quantity of fraudulent activity and the, the stats I've seen are anywhere from 15 to 20 percent but I've heard from customers that uh, that number could be 30 percent or higher when they go through their analysis and they'll, they'll present that to search engines and uh, in one case I've heard of a company that got a refund and in another case when the company complained aggressively, they actually were never to be found again on that search engine. I won't say which one it is. Wow. Um, so you get penalized for actually trying to get the proper value out of your marketing campaigns. They, they were, and, and it just, there's, a, there's an amount of power that search engines wield over companies, and uh, companies feel like they're locked in, and they're really not. I think they just believe that they may be locked in to, to search engines. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a, it's a challenge if you're trying to run a marketing campaign. Uh, being locked in. Yeah, without a doubt. And there are also uh, concerns outside of the actual execution of the campaign, uh, click fraud, like you said, and transparency in auctions. When you get into studies of web user behavior sure. and their impact sure. on how effective your search campaigns will be. And I've heard stats, and you know, the stats, there are a couple of uh, different stats I've seen in terms of how many people click on ads that are related to search and the numbers are somewhere uh, around 16 percent is a number I've seen over and over where you'll see no more than 16 percent of users will click on search related ads. And so you're not talking about a specific ad, you're just talking behaviorally out of every 100 yeah. people surfing the web, 16 of them mm -hmm. will ever on any topic click on a search ad. Sure, and that's based on the research that we found in, in I think that we'll see more research and, and hopefully there'll be more clarity there. But the reality is there are a number of people that don't click on search ads. And I know that anecdotally when I speak to people, so many people will tell me, oh, I never click on search ads, I never click on search ads. And the point is that if, let's say the number's 20% that click on search ads, that means 80% of the potential buyers are not being reached right. via that mechanism, mm -hmm. which is an interesting statistic and an interesting part of the market to ignore. So, so it's a very large number. Quite logically, that moves us into the alternatives to the search ad, which is uh, to become the owner of highly organically optimized search pages so that those, let's just use 80 out of 100 
web users who are not going to click the ads will have a better chance of clicking and visiting your site or your online community or another um, page on the web that carries your message. Well, I would, I would say it's actually 100%. Because I, I would say that 100% of people click on organic search results. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the thing to keep in mind is if, if companies can find a way to rank high organically on search engines without having to rely on click ads that a, a small portion of the population even uses, mm -hmm. then it's incumbent upon them to explore those opportunities for their companies. Because if they can find a fixed pricing model for such a solution mm -hmm. that would allow them to rank high not only for specific keywords but a multitude of keywords mm -hmm. and also maybe get involved in new search and rank high in, in new searches and, and alerts and things like that all at the same time while, while bringing their price to a controllable amount for budgeting purposes that is a, a wonderful alternative to, uh, to cl pay per click advertising. But, but let's think about that for a minute because many companies Let's just take their own websites as an example. Many, many companies, uh, regardless of um, their whatever efforts they can employ, will have a very difficult time cracking the top five or ten results on a particular page, which we know are always the most popular, unless, as you talk about their investment, they employ what I will call unseemly methods that are frowned upon by the search engines. The, sure. the, the gaming methods and things like that. So what is a company like that supposed to do? Based on what you're saying, they, their chances of reaching those uh, web users who click on organic ads is very slim. Well, where do they go? And, and that's a, a, an extremely good point. And even if a company ranks very high for a specific keyword, there are potentially 30 keywords, 40 keywords, 50 keywords that companies really need to rank high on. And... Uh, the more challenging thing is that as time goes on, there's a confluence of things that are happening which make it more difficult for marketers to rank high in search engines. Number one, every year the surveys show that searchers spend less and less time delving down the search engine's right. second, third, fourth, fifth page. So now most of the people assume that, who are searching assume that the, the people above the fold, more or less, meaning the top six results, seven results, are the leaders in the field. So if Not including those sponsored links at the top. Right, or the ads on the right. The, the actual organic results. So they assume that those people, and they associate those people with the leaders in the field. And they, they won't, if there's an RFP process, they won't go beyond that six or eight mm -hmm. pool. They now, equate those links to market share, right. essentially. Right, and you don't have control over the... Um, the search terms for all of the different searches that that you that like you're relevant for your particular product right right you may own one or two or you may be at the right. top for one or two but it's really really tough but i guess the point i was trying to get at before is that there's a confluence of things happening so from one side you've got people the the behavior of people they just will spend less time searching mm -hmm. then they will just pick the top four five six whatever it is on the other side you've got the rise of massively popular sites that you're fighting with right. There's uh, Wikipedia, uh, Twitter is becoming more of a factor, uh, media sites, dictionary sites, how-to sites. It is becoming more and more of a challenge. News sites that, that, that even mainstream news sites, like you know, maybe a New York Times, a CNN, a Wall Street Journal, that's written an article in that space that potentially knock out companies that are, are trying to get in that space. Maybe a company that has a URL that happens, maybe a low-ranked company but has a URL for the, com for the term that you want to rank high in. So it's becoming more and more difficult. And over the next five years, if this trend continues, it's going to become ve even more difficult for companies to even get on the first page organically to, to the, for the keywords that they want. So one potential alternative, uh, something you and I are quite familiar with here at TMC and TMC Net, is for these companies to partner with companies like ours, either to build microsites and micro communities within these major sites that have achieved the high rankings um, or to purchase sponsored areas of these particular sites. Um, do you have any recommendations, suggestions for a good way for these companies to begin the process, how they can get involved in um, taking advantage of the resources of a major media company or a, a higher ranked site to assist their own SEO efforts? Yes, well, if, they, if they're able to find, I mean, depending on the industry, and it depends on who's watching and what industry they're in, but if there's a media company building communities of interest in your space, 
uh, ask them for rankings of the communities that they built. How high do they rank? And do they rank for single keywords? Do they rank for multiple keywords? Have they been able to successfully duplicate a model where they're able to rank virtually all keywords uh, high organically on search engines and multiple search engines? And then I think the next question you've got to ask is what sort of uh, traffic are you able to generate on these communities? Then companies can effectively take the the money that they're spending in their budget that they've allocated to uh, search ads and maybe they see that they've generated um, let's say a thousand a thousand clicks and it costs a certain amount of money via going to a community model where they can see how many clicks are generated, how many page views are generated, etc. The interesting thing about how Which you don't pay for per click, right, you don't right. pay for per unit. Exactly. Right? You, you own your own space. Sure, and that's the, okay, so and that's the most important point that you just made. If you uh, you've got to look at the web as retail in in this new century. This the web has become the retail, the way to get your your company's message out to your potential audience. If you were to open a candy shop, and you were to open a candy shop, let's say, uh, in a, in a country, on a country road, and, and let's say your, your rent is low and you spend a little bit of money for that rent and a little bit of money for that, for that space, and you're selling, let's say, $1,000 uh, a week in candy, or a few thousand dollars a week, you know that if you were to take that same candy store and pay a little bit more rent, and go to a mall, a busy mall, where all the people are, where the entire population is in your area, you are going to take your sales and you're going to possibly quintuple or, or multiply your sales times 10 or times 20 or times 30. Simply because by exposing of, your product to e more people. E exactly. So, so a site that's intelligently designed a number of communities, let's say a few dozen or, or 50 or 100 or more of these communities has like in AMC. effect, exactly, like, like what we're doing here, is that we're really recreating the mall atmosphere online so that a company, um, and, and we'll take an example of um, Saks Fifth Avenue, right? A store that, that's extremely successful on Fifth Avenue. You find Saks Fifth Avenue in malls. Why do you find Saks Fifth Avenue in malls? Well, because in order to get to the traffic of, and we'll take Fairfield County as an example, you've got to get into this Stanford Mall. I mean, they have another store on Greenwich Avenue that's another highly trafficked area in Greenwich. That's what stores do, and that's exactly what companies need to do. They need to partner with uh, media companies that build communities for them to recreate that entire mall experience that's been tried and true for, for 100, 200 years and, and do exactly that, but not now geographically based communities, but topical communities. And that is the, the intellectual leap that is being made by a lot of companies that are on the leading edge of understanding that community building, especially news generated community building, is the equivalent of mall building in, in the um, in the future, of the future, of, or of today. Oh, it's just a simple fundamental of, of traffic, right? Of, yeah. Of, of any uh, selling endeavor, be it retail in a mall, um, a mail order in the old catalog days, I guess they're still catalog days, um, or now you're transferring all of that to, to online. Uh, what are some of the, let's assume now that some uh, companies have decided that this is the way to go, that they can achieve their SEO on their own, they need a partner. Um, detail some of the factors they need to look for in their partner. Um, what are some of the factors that help certain sites, companies, media companies like TMC uh, achieve higher rankings? Uh, what what taxes, tactics do they use and what characteristics do they need to have? Well, media partners that would be ones you should look at are ones that have done this successfully in the past. And, and not just ones that are launching, but ones that are successfully launching uh, maybe have a track record of half a decade to a decade. I mean, we've been building them for a decade, but if other companies are able to do the same thing and they've got a track record of a number of years and they have referenceable customers, generally the owners of the communities themselves would be the referenceable customers. Right. And uh, probably the most important part of, of a decision maker's process should be to look and see where do the communities rank, how high are they able to get the communities to rank for the, for the keywords that they're looking to rank? And again, like I said a moment ago, can they rank for multiple 
keywords and can they also rank for a uh, long tail results like uh, news search and things like that and can they generate traffic to a community owner site via all of those mechanisms and then there are secondary and tertiary things which are crucial as well do they have a highly trafficked home page where they're able to uh, place the news and have traffic right, come to them as traffic, well yeah. do they have a highly ranked uh, suite of bloggers that can that can cross link to articles that are living on communities and, and drive traffic? Do they have a suite of newsletters that are sent out on a regular basis to readers that are interested? I mean, after all, this is, this is really all for the readers. At the end of the day, these communities are things that readers bookmark and they come back to again and again right. and again. So, um, so that takes you even beyond the comparison that, that we began the conversation with. Building these communities uh, may initially start out as an alternative to extremely expensive search ad campaigns you're transferring that investment from those search ads into an organic result by partnering with a major media company. The benefits that you're describing now go beyond that initial goal into developing this loyal community of readers who are constantly exposed to your messaging and the sure. benefits of your, your products. And, and, so. and there's a little bit more I can go on. I'm, I'm going to go off on a slight tangent here, but a few years back, Circuit City decided to save money and they uh, let go of all of their high-priced staff that was the most knowledgeable. And a number of people predicted the demise of Circuit City a few years back because they let go of all those people. Because at the end of the day, buyers go to those stores. They go to retail outlets to become educated. And even if the Internet exists, they still need secondary sources for education, especially with something like uh, large flat screen TV purchases where the technology is evolving so rapidly and the model numbers are different from store to store. You've got to, at some point, become educated. And uh, what happened was Circuit City filed for bankruptcy a couple years later because they didn't focus on the education. And that just shows you how important it is to have your branding and messaging in front of the customer as they are being educated. So you're actually spending money when you build some sort of channel or community with a media company that is providing objective and in-depth news and analysis on that site. You're providing education for someone who's in the middle of the buying process. There's no better time to talk to someone than while they're in the middle of the buying process. And so now I'm telling you why it's important for the sponsors to be involved in the communities. For the readers, communities are fantastic because sponsors are subsidizing the effort of the media company or are sponsoring that content so high quality content can be delivered in an organized fashion to the reader. At so, a time when that reader is, is conducting research or in some way making comparisons between sure. different solutions. Make it easy to find, make it something that has lots of content, make sure it answers a lot of questions, gives them good objective research, and that's what a, a decision maker needs before they make the decision. That comfort level is, is crucial. And it's the difference between uh, selling something where you're giving the buyer the comfort level of seeing that they've seen the whole market perspective as opposed to a single click ad that goes to a single website where a buyer has to take for granted that what the the seller is, is saying is accurate. You've well, got to take and, that for granted. And by transferring that link that the, the reader or the user or the buyer clicks from the ad side of the page to the organic link side of the page immediately increases its credibility before the user even gets to that Absolutely. page. Absolutely. Rich, thank you for taking some time today to talk to us about the cure for click ad fatigue, and thank you for watching.